Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and today I've got some fun stuff to share with you. Just talking about collecting and things that I enjoy and things that I bought recently uh, that I may need some explanation. Uh, as always, like, share, comment. Answer for me this, riddle me this, folks. What is this thing here? Scotch Whiskey, Stark Enterprises, Cuddy. So this I got from one of our good clients here, and I thought it was really fun. Um, I'm probably just going to keep this. You guys know me and well enough if you watch a little bit that I keep coin jewelry related items. Other coin related items. Here we go. Blended Scotch Whiskey 88 Proof uh, imported by Buckingham Corp. New York, New York. Get a rope. Here we go. An O-Mint 1901 Morgan Dollar here. So my question to you is, this is like a like a plastic, some type of plastic, you know, and it's an advertising token clearly, but it's not a good for. So my question to you is, what was this, how was this used? Was it, it's not like a redeemable token. Um, I have my own thoughts, which I'll share right now. Uh, I think perhaps, you know, at first I thought it could have been a place holding for like if you're playing poker or something for your cards, like a card holder. But I think it could have been used actually for your glass of whiskey. Like the base of your glass would set on top of the Morgan dollar and you'd still be able to read the Cuddy Sark. So this is cool because it has appeal for, um, you know, combination of uh, coin collectors and alcoholics all together at the same time. But uh, but really, really, so a lot of people collect certain brands or advertising tokens, advertising medals, that type of thing. All right, next up, I've got some stuff. So this is not for sale. This is stuff that, um, you know, that I'm just kind of going to rat hole away. And this is something you should consider rat holing yourself. The World's Columbian Exposition, we've talked about this before, the first... Um, real big circulating commemorative coin, the half dollar that came out 1892, 1893 for the Chicago World's Fair. You have to listen to the book, The Devil in the White City, if you haven't. Just an amazing time in US history. It comes to life in that book. I guess you can read the book if you can read. But also, if you look at this, this thing is, this ticket's put printed by the American Banknote Company of New York. Look at all the little fine printing in there. There's several different tickets that they produce. There's a lot of different tickets that they produce. So the 1st of May to the 30th of October, 1893, admit to the bearer, World's Columbian Exposition, Chicago. And there's Honest Abe. And so tickets like this, um, they vary a little bit depending on, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different stuff out there, but the price points on stuff all over the place, but you can find a lot of tickets for like 15 to $45 range if they're just kind of average used tickets like this one. Once again, look at the detail in that. These look like little cobras here on the side. This one has been mounted, so if you see stuff like that on paper, that is mounting that they would do. And not Mountain Dew though, American Banknote Company. Pretty cool on that, but also they had specific tickets just for children. Children's special ticket. Now this is actually, uh, there was different types of children's tickets. This is the children's special ticket. Uh, and these guys here, let me see if this was a perforated on the edge or not. I don't think so. I think this is just issued this way. So you'll have two part tickets. I'll show you one in a minute. They're really hard to come by. They've become very popular, it seems as of late. I still find these things overall to be kind of a fun thing to collect that is tangential to coin collecting. Good for one admission at children's pay gates. So, you know, kids were coming in separate from the parents. Dot, dot, dot. Also previously mounted. This one has a pull tab over here where the mounting came off. Unfortunately. But also, like I said, it's good for the collector. You can go buy stuff like this on eBay for not too much. But where you run into a little bit more rarity, and now people are getting these graded, of course, is if you get the uh, the ticket connected to the original stub. And so when I was looking for 
perforations on that other piece to see if it had come. You'll find children's tickets that I think are a little bit more squared off like this Manhattan Day ticket is. So 1971-71, fun ticket number. So maybe this was a two-parter and I'm just wrong, but I'm not worried about that right now. I just want to show you what they look like when they do have two parts to them. World's Columbian Exposition, Manhattan Day. So there was Chicago Day, there's Manhattan Day. There's lots of different days. October 21st, 1893. Not good if detached. World's Columbian Exposition. Also, once again, getting into uh, just how cool stuff looks. Um, man, this is always gets me thinking about my tattoo. You look at the print on this guy. You know, what is your world? What does your tattoo say? World's Columbian Exposition. Why? And then the back. Once again, this ticket previously mounted on a, on a board somewhere. But uh, very cool design. State of New York. And so people will collect the different ones here. This one's got the State of New York seal on it. And a little bit of mounting on this side again. And for those of you who are patient enough to wait and watch, um, so some of these some of these tickets, the combo tickets get pretty expensive. I mean, these will trade north of $100 for the combo tickets usually, where you've got both tickets together forever. Uh, this is something that I'm going to keep that I had the chance to get. Actually, I bought this at the Tucson Coin Show, tucsoncoinshow.com. So uh, this, it simply says Denver 1905. Now some of you guys collect coins and you may know something about the Denver area and minting and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So these tokens were produced, drum roll please, in 1905 at the Denver Mint for the opening of the Denver Mint. They're considered by some to be a trial strike uh, generally speaking, to see how the presses would work, they actually have reading on the edges. And so these are these fall into that category of what they call so-called dollars. Now, so-called dollars is basically commemorative issues, oftentimes from an exposition or something of the like, just a commemorative issue for an event oftentimes. And you will see them uh, in a book called the so-called dollar book. And so this is what this HK SC, this so-called dollar SC, 876 is the number on there, 1905. So this is, this is the book. This is like the older version here. The Hibbler and Kappen, that's the HK. And there's uh, newer editions in this one, but you saw that that was number 876. And so I have it bookmarked here for page 876, and we'll take a closer look after I get my meaty fingers out of the way here. Denver Mint opening, and you can see that they say that supposedly thousands were produced, but uh, they're considered decidedly scarce. And what's really hard to find is any of these with uh, any mint luster left on them or in high grade. And you'll see there's an 876 and 876A and 876B so silver, I did some some sleuthing here, and you know an R9, but the silver one NGC has a pop of one, and then this other one here is a bronze gilted one. So it looks like these, but it's like gold plated. PCGS has a pop of one, and when it comes to these other bad boys, this guy right in front of you, there is a population of only 55 at NGC. And at PCGS, the population, I think was like 13 or 16 or something like that. Um, depends if you're counting red browns and whatnot, I guess. So anyways, think about that, guys. There's less than 100 of these available in the open marketplace in any grade. And so this, to me, is just the kind of thing, like, how cool is that? I mean, it's the Denver Mint, 1905, the first thing struck from the presses. And so that's the type of thing that... Uh, I am going to rat hole, squirrel away. Maybe we shouldn't rat things away. We'll squirrel it away. That's just people like squirrels, not rats. I think rats could be smarter, guys. That's that's the big controversy of the day. Which is smarter, a rat or a squirrel? 
but uh, these actually have some luster on the back and so I may release this to the world if I can upgrade, if I can get a coin that I find nicer. Um, whether it's the same grade or not doesn't matter as long as I think it's a nicer looking piece. Guys, let me know what you think of this guy. Thanks so much for watching today. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.